How to get great results on a budget. Chances are, if you're here watching my videos, there's probably one thing we all have in common. We wanna see great results. Whether it's weight loss, muscle gain, something along those lines, we all want to see results in some way, shape, or form. But one thing we don't wanna do is break the bank in the process, spending tons of money unnecessarily in order to see those results. So in today's video, I wanna teach you how to see great results on a budget. And I'm gonna give you five tips, five key elements to make sure you're not spending an arm and a leg just to see great results. I feel like one of the most common things that comes up on a regular basis when I'm having conversations with new clients or potential clients is, hey, how much should I spend on this? Or what kind of supplement should I get? What things do I need to actually have in order to see great results? Well, I'm here to tell you, you don't need to spend a ton of money on a ton of different things and products in order to see great results. And you don't need to spend a bunch of money on organic and natural foods. There are certain things you definitely want to spend a little more on, but there's also a lot of things you don't need to break the bank in the process buying. So let's dive into these five things and I'm so excited to share with you because I feel like you're gonna get a ton of value out of this episode. And just in case you're new here, my name is Coach Tyler. I've been an online coach and personal trainer for the past six years, and I've worked with over 455 people. So you could say I have a little bit of experience in this topic. So that being said, let's dive in. So number one, I think it's really important for us to really assess what really matters when it comes to seeing results. Whether it's weight loss or muscle gain, we need to first establish the important factors in seeing great results. Getting good quality sleep is free. Getting enough movement and steps in your day, that's free. But there are two things that we have control over every day, and that is how much we move our body and what we put in our body. And if we can control those two things, I would say that your chances of actually seeing great results are extremely high. So when it comes to your movement, whether it's your gym membership, honestly, you don't even need a gym membership to build a ton of muscle or to lose a bunch of body fat. I have a lot of clients that just buy some bands for $25 off Amazon and they see great results. I also have people that want to spend $200 a month on a gym membership where it's not super busy. Like this time of year, I know a lot of the big public gyms are extremely busy. So for you, you got to find the gym membership that number one has the equipment you need to see results and number two has maybe certain amenities or isn't too busy for what you want. I know gym memberships can range from $10 a month up to $200 a month, depending on where you like to go. So really figure out what your budget is when it comes to getting a proper gym membership. For you, having just a set of bands, a set of dumbbells, or something at home, that is totally fine and enough if you know how to properly structure your workouts. What I always recommend to people, full body workouts, three days a week, again, it is free. But most importantly, I want you to know one of the most important factors is just moving. It doesn't cost you any money to get up off your butt and start walking. Walking eight to 10,000 steps a day is a perfect segue into your journey of weight loss. And sometimes that's all it really takes. Now, let's go on to food. When it comes to your food, there are two things that our clients focus on. Your protein and calories calories are going to be the catalyst that tell your body, hey, we want to gain, so being in a caloric surplus, or hey, we want to lose, so being in a caloric deficit, your calories are one of the most important factors. Then, on the other hand, when it comes to building muscle, one of the most important factors is protein. And by the way, this is also extremely important for weight loss. Having more muscle on your body will have, help you have a faster metabolism, thus allowing for easier and more sustainable fat loss. So those are the two things. Whether you're building muscle or losing body fat, protein and calories are the two things you need to absolutely focus on when it comes to seeing great results. So what really matters? Your calories? your protein, and having some sort of routine, whether it's getting steps in, having a workout plan to follow inside your home or at the gym. That's step one. 
So number two, I actually touched on a little bit while discussing number one, and this is really just the order of importance. So like I mentioned, calories are going to be number one when it comes to seeing results. So if you're trying to build muscle, you're trying to gain weight, you need to make sure you're in a caloric surplus. So usually this is two to 500 calories more than your body burns on a daily basis. Then if you're looking for weight loss, you want to be two to 500 calories in a caloric deficit. Now, if you don't know how to calculate those or you don't know where to go from there, go click on my video about macros made easy where I break down how to find your caloric maintenance and how to adjust them for weight loss or muscle gain. Next on the order of importance is protein. When it comes to your protein, obviously having better quality protein sources is gonna be helpful, but honestly there are a ton of budget-friendly sources of protein that you can find like yogurts and quality meats are not hard to find at a good price. Personally, I like to use ButcherBox grass-fed, grass-finished meat, and it is the highest quality and you buy it in bulk. Costco is a great option for finding good quality protein at a decent price, but ultimately you're not going to move as close or have as easy of a time getting to your goal if you're not eating enough protein. Next on the order of importance is fats. Fats are extremely important to have in your diet because they help regulate your hormones. Now, if your fats are too low, that's not good. Too high isn't necessarily a bad thing because I know certain people prefer to have more fats in their diet and other people do not. And then the cheapest nutrient to find is carbs. Now, the quality of those carbs will come into play. However, we'll talk about those more when we talk about food quality and what really matters when it comes to food quality. And that's exactly what we're gonna dive into here with number three. When does quality actually matter? So if you can, what I'd highly advise you to do is go on Google and type in the clean 15 as well as the dirty dozen. So the clean 15 are a list of 15 foods that you can buy that don't have to be organic, that are actually high quality and tend to not have as many pesticides or horrible things sprayed on them that can cause many negative effects to your health. On the other hand, the dirty dozen are 12 foods that tend to be covered in glyphosates and horrible things on them that are not so good for you that I highly recommend you try to buy organic. This is important because sometimes avocados can be on either list. And if you want avocado in your diet, but you also don't want to spend an arm and a leg buying organic ones, sometimes it's on the clean 15 list. And they update this every year. So really, it would be important for you to go check this out. You can go find this list anywhere online, but it's definitely something that's helped me really figure out what foods I need to spend a little bit more on and what ones I need to spend a little bit less on. And this actually brings me to number four, which is a grocery list. So in advance, before you even go to the store, making an actual list, a grocery list, specifically deciding what foods you're going to get, what quality of that food you're going to be aiming to purchase is going to help you budget out how much money you're going to spend at the grocery store. Personally, I like to the gro go to the grocery store once a month, and this helps me really plan out my weeks in advance. So I'm not going out of my way to go spend money on food, going out to eat, and ultimately just that alone saves me a ton of money on foods that I don't actually need. When I plan everything in advance, freeze the foods that I'm not using at that current moment, I'm gonna save a lot more money because everything's gonna be planned out for the future. Some people like to go on a weekly basis, some on a monthly basis like me, but really you gotta find that for you. But having an actual list to go to the grocery store with is gonna save you a ton of time and a ton of money because you're not gonna spend money on foods you don't actually need or things from the store you don't actually need. So plan ahead before you go to the store if you really want to make sure you get the most out of your grocery trips. Ultimately, this grocery list topic really just reminds me of something that I've really put a big emphasis on over the last six months, which is actually having a structured and planned budget. Having an idea of like, how much money do I actually have to spend on groceries? How much do I want to spend on groceries? And when I make that list in advance, I can go on, whether it's Ralph's or Vaughn's or, or Costco, whatever, I can go on their website and plan in advance how much money I'm gonna spend on these groceries. If you really want to see the best results while saving as much money as possible, just 
put a little bit more time and energy and focus into planning ahead, and you'd be surprised on how much money you can save as well as how good of results you can see when you plan things in advance. Whether it's the meals you're having for the week or how often you're going to the grocery store, you're going to tend to spend less money on going out to eat. And going out to eat is one thing that I feel like people have a misunderstanding. Sure, it's cheap in the moment, but if you add up all the days that you're eating out, if you add up all the meals that you tend to have, by the way, it's totally fine to go out and eat every once in a while. At the end of the day, it's like, it's not realistic to completely cut out going out to eat or getting fast food here and there. Once a week, I like to go out to eat. However, it's not necessarily the smartest thing financially. So sometimes you need to make a sacrifice, at least for a short period of time, in order to save more money, go out to eat less often. When you have food planned, ready to eat on a daily basis, you're going to be less likely to spend money on things you don't actually need in your day-to-day -day life. Lastly, number five, I do want to mention the long-term costs the long-term costs of not being healthy. What people don't really realize or think about is the long-term outcomes of not being healthy, the long-term outcomes of doctor's visits, and how this unhealthy eating can lead to negative health outcomes in your future. Ultimately, going to the doctor a ton, being sick all the time, breaking or hurting yourself, is really expensive. Having to go through injuries, having to go to the doctors when you're sick all the time because your immune system is shot, it's not a good time. So eating healthy, taking care of your body is going to prevent a lot of things when it comes to negative health outcomes. So if you truly want to save money, actually spending a little bit more on your health is going to provide more income in your pockets for the long term, which I know for a lot of people is hard to actually consider or even think about in the current moment, but really think ahead to how many friends, family, people that you know that don't take care of their health and the things that they've had to pay for, both financially and time-wise. At the end of the day, I wanna make sure that not only you can see results no matter what financial situation you're in, I wanna make sure that you can actually get to where you wanna be without having to break the bank. Lastly, thank you so much for sticking around to the end here. I hope you found a ton of value in today's video. And if you have any questions, please comment them below. Please like this video. It would mean the absolute world to me. And subscribe for more content just like this. Catch you on the next one. Peace.